today is how do we cause people to change? How would you cause them to uh, shift their beliefs, shift their attitude when maybe they don't want to? Right? Okay? Because not everybody wants to do exactly what you think that they should do, right? Okay, so the first thing that happens is, is I want you to do something different behaviorally. What do you want to do be different behaviorally? Do you want to stop smoking? Do you want to stop drinking? Do you want to stop doing drugs? Do you want to start making more, excuse me, start making more money? Do you want to start being more productive? Do you want to start being uh, wiser with your communication that you have with the people around you? Pick any of these things, okay? One thing is certain, something is going to have to start has to be a trigger. Okay, so I want you to write right here, trigger. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you a trigger that I have. On my coffee table, I do, I do all of my work from my coffee table, almost all of it. But at home, I work from my coffee table because I don't like the idea of going to the office every day. That's a trigger. So I sit down at my coffee table, and forever, I have sat at the coffee table, and I have written three million words at my coffee table. Just pause there. Three million words at the coffee table have been written. And I've written on the road, at hotels, all around the world, but I've written three million words at my coffee table. My coffee table is a trigger. It's a specific cause. That is what's known as an environmental trigger. Okay, so here's the deal that says environmental. Now, the deal is this. You are doing something that you want to change, right? There's something you want to change. You want to make more sales. You want to make uh, more effective employees. You want to create performance at the office. You want people to like you more. Whatever it is, something in your environment, something around you in the context of your environment is causing people to not be as effective as they could or to not say yes as often as they could or to not be as helpful as they could. That means something has to change. So for me, it was getting up out of an office. And I used to have an office. I used to have an office with, you walk in the door, computer right there on top of the desk. And I had the hardest time getting anything done. It was so difficult. I, oh, and not everybody's like this. A lot of people do really well with the desk. So I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to go have a coffee table and, and put your computer on there. I mean, I have my laptop, right? And I do everything from my laptop. So for me, it was a question of getting up out of my office and going to my coffee table. And the very first day I did that, I found myself increasing productivity <laughs> dramatically, very, very dramatically. No longer what did I feel like a slave. Now I was like, oh, I can actually work. This is cool. That's an environmental trigger. Okay, we isolated what wasn't working, got rid of it, changed the, uh, the context, moved to a different environment. It's as simple as that. All right, so what we have now is we have a cause. So write down the word cause in this box right there, cause. So the cause now is the coffee table. The cause is a trigger. It's a trigger. All it is is like priming. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's just a simple environmental trigger. Now, once we have a cause, we say, oh, I can actually work here. I know I can do this. What happens is, is that Kevin starts to work on a book today, right? Ke I'm writing a book today. I'm actually writing three books this year. And so I'm taking actions, OK? So write down actions right there, all right? And actions are behaviors. So in other words, I'm typing. Today I'm typing. Today I'm typing, and I'm getting progress done on my book. If I, when I was in sales, I, I've sold advertising. And when I used to sell advertising, I worked from my coffee table or my dining room table, never from the office. When I sold advertising, I worked from the coffee table or the dining room table, never from an office, or I never would have made it. I never would have been able to do it. I had to have that environmental change that causes the actions to be taken. Now Kevin's sitting at the dinner table where anybody who walks in the door can see him, right? This is 20 years ago. So, you walk into the, the kitchen and there's Kevin, he's, he's working away, right? Everybody sees Kevin working away. This is really important. Remember I was just telling you that everything that we do is not necessarily important for us, but it's important for the others around us and how they respond and react to us. That's where differences change. Those are triggers. Those are human triggers that come toward us and now we start behaving differently because people around us are behaving differently. Oh, shh, Kevin's working. 
Daddy's working. He's getting work done. See, work is getting done. Behave. You behave differently, and that causes Kevin to behave differently. Cool? Is that cool or what, right? So write the word actions here. When, once you have a cause, actions are going to happen. Those actions are behaviors, right? So you know, massive action. You know, I love Tony, but you know, he'll talk about action and taking massive action. Yeah. Massive action is not something you do in one minute. Massive action is something you do over a day, over a month, over a year, right? Very important concept to remember. Once you sit down and you start taking actions, you're moving. And you are now creating attitudes, and you don't even know it. Cool? Watch this. Because once you start to perform actions, you get beliefs. You know what happens? All of a sudden, you start to get things done. I've changed from the office to the coffee table, and I'm actually getting work done. I'm making sales. I'm contacting people on the telephone. I'm making sales, making money. I'm working on my, new, uh, my next book, and it's actually getting written, right? So beliefs are what come here, beliefs and attitudes. They come from these actions right there. Once I see myself being competent, once I see myself as having done this, and I know that I can do it, then I no longer wonder if I can do it, correct? I now know precisely what's going to happen. I've written three million words at my coffee table. My website, kevinhogan.com, we're relaunching it this weekend, ironically, the same weekend as Jeffrey's relaunching his, his book for the first time in two decades. No kidding, first time in 20 years. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm also terrified. So <laughs> actions and behaviors cause new beliefs to happen. Actions and behaviors cause new beliefs to happen. A lot of people switch this around, but I want you to just consider what would happen if this was correct. Because this is, this is pretty much what works 100% of the time. There's other ways that are going to cause attitudes to change, change behaviors, but behaviors that change attitudes, now watch what happens next. See, as soon as I start to believe in myself, I don't have to say I believe in myself, do I? As soon as I start to believe that I can do something, that I can write a book, that I can write three, that I can make 50 sales this week, that I can do whatever is necessary to put food on the table, put money into the 401k, save, put, put retirement uh, fears at ease, set up, a, set up a, a beautiful set in a beautiful home, for example, or uh, just kind of have the life that you want, right? right? What does that come from? It comes from beliefs and attitudes. Why? Because you did stuff that gave you the beliefs that are like, well, now all I got to do is do is just do it, and it'll happen. That's a positive attitude. That attitude is what I call certainty. Certainty is critical. When you're communicating with other people, certainty matters a lot. Certainty matters a lot. Write that down. People, it's a really funny thing. You and I can be sitting and watching somebody speak over there, or, or make a sale, or ask the girl out for a a date and we're sitting there going gosh he's being awfully cocky that kid is so arrogant that guy is so arrogant how can he get away with that and then all of a sudden the woman says I'd love to go out with you or yes I'll buy your product and we sit there and go what happened he was arrogant he was cocky write this down certainty sells everything okay certainty sells everything okay now there's nothing about being right or wrong here <laughs> You can sell a lot <laughs> through certainty that is not correct, it's not good for somebody. You can sell anything. But once you know that product X is the solution to problem Z and the person buys it and they're certain that it works. I was over in, um, I was over in Europe this, this year and I don't want to tell too many details of the story because I know this is going to get out. But I was, I was with my girlfriend at the time and uh, I, she, she said to me, she said, she says, I got a really bad headache. This is a cue for me to go to the pharmacia, right, at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I said, okay, well, babe, what do you, what do you need? You know, like, what do you need? Because her brand of getting well from a headache and my brand from getting well from a headache are two different things. I said, would you like me to get you some wine? Would you like me to get some Tylenol? Would you like me to get some ibuprofen? Would you like some painkillers? What do you want me to get at the pharmacia? We're in Italy, so you can get anything you want. It's almost like being in Bulgaria. So... We're in Italy, and she says, I need some aspirin. I need some aspirin. And I'm like, aspirin. Okay. So I go to the pharmacia, 
and I say, I need some aspirin. My girlfriend has a headache. And the guy said, and, and I don't know why I didn't think of it, but the guy says, the pharmacist says, and by the way, they're open at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's the only thing in the whole city that's open is the pharmacy is, not even bars. I said, I need some aspirin. He says, do you want the kind that fizzes in the water? Or would you just like regular aspirin? I said, just give me the regular aspirin. Why? Because I was buying for me at that moment, not for the girl back with the headache, who lives in Europe, right? Not very smart on my part, was it? Okay, because whose product am I buying? Am I buying for her? Am I buying for me? At this moment, I'm sitting here impatiently waiting, talking to the pharmacist, like, just give me some aspirin. It's all the same, right? It's aspirin. Okay, aspirin is aspirin. If you stick it in it, it fizzes, it doesn't matter. All right, it just makes no difference. I was totally wrong. I got back to the hotel and I gave the, I said, babe, I got you some aspirin. I gave her the aspirin. And she says, oh, this isn't the kind that fizzes in the water. I said, well, no. I go, it's still 500 milligrams of aspirin, and you will feel better. Well, she felt a little better the next day. But if I would have got the kind that fizzed, that behavior, that would have had different result, wouldn't it? Because that placebo would have come out with, I feel so much better. Thank you for getting the right kind this time. Now, by the way, I don't always make these guffaws, but sometimes I do just like you, right? So always be thinking that when you're doing something for somebody, are you doing it with your thinking process uh, in play, or are you utilizing their thinking process for when I get back to the hotel room, right? Ah, darn. Okay, so certainty sells everything. If I would have had the fizzy aspirin, then all of a sudden, and I've seen this work before too, by the way, where, where you open it up and she's like, oh, and then she feels better like 10 minutes later before it even hits the bloodstream. And all of a sudden she's better because it fizzed. Didn't think of that, right? That's what you get for living in the United States. Certainty sells everything. You've got a trigger. It causes you to perform actions and behaviors that you have not done before consistently. These actions and behaviors that you have not done consistently before create new beliefs and attitudes inside of you right Right now, right at this second, you now know that you are competent. You now have certainty that you can sell and write or whatever it is that's now here. And then once you have this and people, people want to know like, oh, well, geez, you know, uh, Kev, you know, you're, you're doing pretty well at this. Why don't you try to get a publisher now? You're like, well, yeah, I suppose I could do that. Never done that before, right? Haven't had the experience to see if that's possible, right? So what's going to happen here is now that you have certainty that you can sell everything and you realize, well, after all, selling a book is just like selling advertising. It's the same thing. You're talking to somebody. You're asking them to weigh the considerations. You're seeing what you have in common. You're connecting with each other. You're finding out if you're a good match. Basically, that's what everything is like. Life is a relationship, right? Life is not about products and services. Life is about relationships. It's about identity. Yes? True? Is that a true statement? So you, here, decisions, right? Decisions and choices here. Once you have beliefs and attitudes that have been uh, iced in certainty, now you make different choices. Now you have different beliefs. Before, you didn't know if you could sell advertising. You didn't know if you could write a book. You didn't know if you could do 3 million words at the coffee table. You didn't know if your website would ever make it to 3,000 pages. 3,000 pages, no kidding. Wicca Hogan, right? Okay, 3,000 pages. You didn't know if you could do that. So now you're here. So the beliefs and attitudes, now I'm certain. And, my, and the fact of the matter is, if something comes down to Hey Kev, would you can you, or can you do this? I probably can because I've done some pretty amazing things. I'm sitting here like I can do it. Of course I can do it. Now, by the way, I can't beat Michael Phelps at swimming, and I can't beat the snowboarders in the Olympics at snowboarding, can I? And I can't do downhill anywhere near as well as any of those folks. I will die. Why? Because I don't have any of the actions to to back up any belief that I might hallucinate about myself. This is not about hallucination. This is about real life. This is real life happening to real people and making real changes. This is not like I, I'm going to go play Michael Jordan because I believe in myself. I can beat him. I can't, right? I can't beat LeBron James no matter what. It's not possible, okay, without hurting men permanently, right? Okay, so here we are, decisions and choices now. So I'm making better decisions and choices. I'm making new decisions and choices based upon certainty. And once somebody says to me, Kev, will you be able to have that book to us by August 30th? I'll say, yeah, I'll get that. It's done. And it's just done. You don't have to write it down in a contract. You don't need it on paper. You don't have to put it anywhere. I said I would do it. It'll get done. It's that simple. 
as you develop certainty in yourself and people ask you, you quickly evaluate. Hey, Kev, do you think you could beat, uh, uh, do you think you could beat your son in a guitar playing contest? Uh, that would be no. Okay, no, because he's better than I am by magnitudes. Magnitudes, not like percentages, but magnitudes. So that I can't do. Can you beat him at foosball over there or pool? Yeah, that I can do half the time. Wouldn't want to create delusion, maybe 60% if I'm having a good day and he's having a really bad day. But that I can do because I've seen it happen over and over and over again. And if I see myself lo lose over and over again, so I know specifically with certainty that I can make this happen at least part of the time. But I know that I can always write the book. I can always finish the project. Everything will get done. It'll all be taken care of. Everything will be fine. If somebody puts it in my hand and I say it can happen, it'll happen and I'll do it and it'll get done. End of story. That's the positive attitude that I want you to have for the rest of your life based upon what? Your hallucinations? A belief that comes out of nowhere that you have some idea about? No, no, no. I want it based on beliefs and attitudes which came from certainty. Certainty. Based on a hundred percent absolute expectation based on past performance. You have concrete, you have concrete behind you. You've done it over and over and over and over and over again. And there's no more question now. Now it's a for sure deal. Okay? So now you're making different choices and you're making different decisions than you used to. Hey Kev, I, you, the book is due August 30th. Yeah, I can I can I can get that done. That didn't sound like it to me, did it? That didn't sound like yes to me, did it? I can get that done. That's not yes. That's not yes, right? You see that, right? It'll be done. It's done already. It's done. Notice the difference? One, it's done. I'm going to the grocery store, and I'm going to get the groceries. Can I get you anything? Yes, get me some Diet Pepsi, grab me some ice, and uh, some uh, potato chips. OK, I'll be back in 20. Just going across the street, right? Any question that the person needs your help? You can do it. I know you can do it. I really believe in you. Not necessary. They've been to the store hundreds of times, thousands of times. They told you they're going and they're going to get something for you and bring it back. Hundreds of times, thousands of times. There is absolute certainty. Absolute certainty. And now that they have certainty, now when faced with new choices and new decisions, they start to make changes in the decisions they make and they start, people start to now go from here, which is where they've been in the box forever, to here. They make bigger boxes for themselves, right? Because they have done all of these things. I've written 3 million words in 24 books. I'm going to do three more this year, okay? It's not all that exciting anymore. It's still cool, right? It's still cool, but it's not like it goes, oh, that's, you know, bigger beliefs. As you do more, as you have replicated behaviors over and over, and as they continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you've performed more and more sales, or you've be become a better person every single day, or you've been more generous every single day, or more valuable to the people around you every single day, as you've practiced your workout, or looking a little bit better for your age, or whatever it is that you're doing, you develop bigger beliefs. You develop those bigger beliefs. Somebody said on Facebook, Lisa Metalway, uh, uh, old friend from a million years ago dropped by my Facebook today and put a little note on my Facebook. I, I changed my profile photo today. And she says, what are you doing, reverse aging? And I just said, I'll let you know when I hit 17. Now, you can't be competent and certain about everything. And if you are, you are a fool because you will die in a car crash next month. All right. You must know the things that you're excellent at and that you're amazing at. And you must know where you have uncertainty, where you need to learn. Right. And finally, these bigger beliefs that you have to take on bigger projects, to accomplish more, to do more, to get more in life, out of life, for life, to do more for other people, to big, make a bigger difference in other people's lives, to make a difference in the, in the lives of a one-year-old child or a six-month-old baby who's been orphaned or put or is homeless, to make these kind of decisions. It only comes through the sequence of going through that began with a little teeny action sitting at the coffee table, right? So these bigger beliefs lead to bigger actions. Write the word actions down here. Big actions and big habits. I make it a habit to do everything I possibly can to make somebody's life better every single day. I got a chance when I was in Bulgaria about a year ago. 
and uh, we went to a, uh, it wasn't an orphanage, but it was something like an orphanage. And in Bulgaria, it's not so great when children don't have parents. Um, and I'll spare you all of that. I will tell you simply where we went. And what we did is these are, they have therapists and all, all making maybe $10 a day, $10, $20 a week, very small amounts of money, but everybody's helping a child, a child, one to one ratios. Whereas in most places in Bulgaria, one to 20. Okay, so I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to pay their rent for a year. That was my goal. So I found out what it would cost to do that and we did a fundraiser and I knew that it was going to work. In fact, I was 100% sure because now, as you're starting to do bigger habits and bigger actions, this all leads to one thing, one thing, a bigger life, a bigger life. What's a bigger life? A bigger life is something where you have experiences that are new, where you get a chance to, to taste something that you've never tasted before. It gives you a chance to change somebody's life in a way that you never have before. It gives you an opportunity to actually make a difference in somebody else's life that you've never been able to do before. You've always wanted to be helpful to these people over here, but you never had the money or the time. Now you have a little bit of both. And then you have a lot of bit of both. And now you can decide whether how much money you want to keep for yourself and what you want to do for the people that are around you and the people in your environment. And every time you select an environment, it's on purpose for a reason. It's on purpose for a reason. Because the environment that you put yourself in is part of the triggers that are going to cause all of these things to happen. Without it, without the trigger, without the cause, there's nothing. The first set of actions that you take, you must succeed at them. On Keep working at them until you do. And then once you do, that's going to create your actions. That's going to create new choices and new decisions. I can do that. I can do Of course, yeah, I really can. I mean, I do. I saw myself do it the other day. I ran a mile. I couldn't believe it. And now I make a choice. I'm going to go do it. And it makes easier and bigger actions now. I can actually pull this off, which creates easier and bigger beliefs and habits that I can have, which gives me a bigger life. Now, is a bigger life a better life? You tell me. If you can feed a whole bunch of people over there today and you couldn't five years ago is a bigger life a better life i'll let you think about it